Well, Jeff, we're uh, here in July kicking off fall camp. That sounds strange, but here we go. Another season, huh? Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Uh, whenever you're going to your fifth year at a place, uh, sometimes, you know, you reflect and look back how far we've come. And then you know how committed uh, so many people are in this building. Uh, so many coaches, so many players have been with us so long. that I'm really excited uh, just to see. I know we lost some unbelievable players. And uh, whenever you say Rashad Wisdom, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Josh Cephas, Jacksonville Jaguars, Brandon Madison, Denver Bronco, Frank Harris gone. Those are, those are some really good players. So I understand there's, there'll be some skepticism about what the Roadrunners will look like, but I'm excited to see, you know, where after five years our culture will take us. Jeff, you guys often come into a season with, whether it's a mantra or a hashtag or kind of some drum you want to beat through the year. Do you have one ready to go for the new season? We do. Uh, we're, we're trying to keep it a little bit, you know, quiet. I mean, the, it's GTS number 12, and uh, it's just got a little private meaning to us. Um, we'll see. Uh, our players have some pretty big visions and thoughts on that, but. We'd rather kind of keep that, you know, in-house right now. Um, and we'll reveal it if it becomes true. <laughs> Physically, Coach, just what's your kind of assessment of the team? Just how does everybody look coming off the spring and the summer? Uh, we're optimistic. Uh, you know, we don't tackle to the ground. Uh, so we, we thud up and we tag. So that's always a little concerning uh, because we haven't gone to the ground. And... Um, now, how much do we do that this spring uh, before we, you know, open up against Kennesaw? Um, but we think we're good, uh, but we still got to get through grades. We've got some summer left, um, and it seems like we've lost one player every summer that I've been here. Just, you know, shockingly that didn't quite get a homework assignment turned in or maybe didn't do so good on the test. Those things are always a little scary. So uh, whoever's on the bus to load up to go to the Alamo Dome on the 30th, I'll know, you know, generally you know, we did lose a player once in pregame uh, to an injury, but other than that, that'll be when we know for sure you know what we have on the field. But we, we feel good about our team. I'll start the quarterback questions, Coach. I mean, you said in the spring that you wanted to bring in a veteran guy to maybe challenge Eddie Lee and and challenge McCown. Did did Davis fit that bill for you guys? Was he that veteran? Obviously, you wanted to bring in. Yeah, and more than just that, is we've known him for a long time. We have a background with him. He's played in the largest games in the state of Texas, and I would argue when you're when it's North Shore and Duncanville and, and, and state championship games, many times that kid did that. That's college-like experience. Obviously, his experience of playing college football, he's got a lot of playing time as well. Uh, he's a humble person. He's kind of shifty and, and different than the other guys. And uh, I think he fit it perfect, especially because of the kind of human that he is. And he's a gamer. You know, he's a, he's a guy that's a proven history of going out in big games and performing. You said it's Eddie Lee. And Owen, is Davis in that competition as well to start for you guys? Well, they're always in that competition. But as far as who's running with the ones and the twos, Eddie and Owen are doing that. And, uh, and D is competing, you know, with Jackson and Brandon Tennyson for that third spot. We'll go fours, you know, for a while. We'll have ones, twos, threes, and fours. Then it'll be ones, twos, and threes. Then it'll be ones and twos and scout teams. And I'll let you guys come that day and deliver the news uh, of that. That's never a fun day. You've mentioned that whoever it is at quarterback will face some tough tests having to go on the road early in the season. Is there anything you can do in fall camp to try to prepare for that, or is that just something they have to go through? Oh, there's always stuff, you know, that you might make you feel better as a coach. I don't think it matters. I mean, people are going to tell you, pump up the noise and make it work so loud and nobody can hear. And, and then I've learned that all my coaches have no voices for the next week and my players all have headaches. And I'm not sure that works either, right? I mean, I, you know, you want off season to be as tough as possible. You want to coach as hard as you possibly can. And uh, you want to instill confidence in your football players. And we're going to always do that. I know everybody talks about our home record, how amazing it is. But we've got a pretty good road record as well. With all the guys you have in the running back room, what does that do for the quarterbacks kind of to take the weight off them a little bit? Well, you can only play one of them or two of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I doubt we're going to go wishbone and play three of them. Uh, so that's a little bit, you know, it gives you great depth. They're very talented, obviously. Um, Julian's done a really good job of recruiting that room. And uh, we're excited about the talent and all those guys returning. I would say whenever you've got that many players returning and the success we had last year, uh, the irony of that room is, you know, we, the fumbles in that room literally killed us last year. But if you look through the whole year, we only fumbled the football 10 times, which is our least amount of fumbles the entire season but we lost eight of them. 
where the year we won 12, we fumbled like 22 times, mm -hmm. and we only lost like five of them, which is a, an amazing statistic. Um, but I know those running backs are really geared up to have a great year, and uh, we, we would think they could take some pressure off those quarterbacks early uh, to make some guys have to really come down and play the run, and then we could max protect. And we've got some really, really fast receivers, and we feel confident about our ability to throw the ball down the football, down the football field. You mentioned at Media Day with the CFP looming, sort of the need to put a more heightened focus on September games compared to past years. Does that change anything about how you ramp up through fall yeah. camp to be ready to go day one? I'm afraid it just has to. And uh, I've looked at everything I could think of to, to see, you know, what that is. And you know, obviously the schedule's been very hard. We played two power five teams uh, in the first four games for two straight years. Army's a really good freaking football team. So, you know, the, the schedule maker made a really tough schedule. That, that's common sense. But I can't control that, so what can I control? And you look at you look at both games, Houston there, Houston here, both were so unbelievably different. And then you look at the, the loss of Army last year, what was that? And that was kind of uniquely different. But I don't think we can give ourselves an easy pass. We have to be honest with the results. We were one and three. And the year before that, we were two and two. And um, that's just not gonna get it done if you really think you can make the playoffs. Where do you think the AAC is in terms of top to bottom from where it was when you were not in the conference, maybe three, four years ago, uh, you know, the year after Memphis, uh, the year after Cincinnati UCF took off, where the AAC is now kind of, it's still considered a group of five conference, but top to bottom, how, how would you assess the, the strength of the AAC? Oh, I think it's a very strong conference. I mean, what happened to SMU last year was, you know, in my opinion, not correct. I mean, they challenged Oklahoma and TCU and played a very tough schedule. And I think they could have played um, as well as anybody at the end of the year last year. Now we lost them, but I believe South Florida, Tulane, Memphis, UTSA, Rice has a bunch of people back. I would not dare sleep on East Carolina. And those are really good football teams. I mean, the Army's been a pain in our butt since we've been here. So all those guys are in our league and I'm not even mentioned in North Texas. Eric Morris has a tremendous history, a record of turning programs around. They scored points last year. They couldn't stop people as well, but they scored a lot. So I know the quarterback they have and Chandler Morris. I mean, I think there's good, really good teams, uh, and the league is committed. I'm really excited about our new uh, commissioner. I think he's got some great ideas, and I know they're going to be aggressive and bold and, uh, and try to move this league forwards. In the spring, you mentioned being a little bit tougher on guys, not fearing pushing people to the transfer portal maybe as much as in years past. Does that carry over to the fall? Do you intend to be any kind of tougher compared to previous years? No, I think it was just common sense as well. I mean, I'm a little probably, to your point, I might have been a little sensitive to that, you know, year before last. Uh, but this year, just going into year five, you know, we just got a lot of deposits made in a lot of our players, so we can get after them more. Uh, our best players allow us to coach them very hard. And whenever the Jamal Liggins, Brandon Brown, Joe Evans, Donye Taylor, you know, Vinley, Kavorian, Amador, McEwen, you know, when they let you just coach them as hard as you want to coach them, everybody else in the roster, you know, falls in place a lot easier. Jeff, who do you think steps up on this team from the leadership aspect? I mean, there's a lot of guys that are not here that were big time leaders on this team. Yeah, I, I expect Oscar to really come on on the offense. Jamal's always led and Oscar's always led, but I would say the vacuum created by Frank and the vacuum created by Rashad, I could see, you know, Jamal. Jamal didn't like to talk a lot uh, is the problem. Ken Robinson would be a guy, Donye Taylor, Brandon Brown, Joe Evans. I would expect all those guys offensively for sure. Uh, Oscar, it's a, it's a quiet group. I McEwen doesn't talk. You know, Amador doesn't talk. Vinley doesn't talk. Uh, Corey doesn't talk. Uh, Owen doesn't talk. Eddie doesn't talk. Kavorian does talk. Uh, Kavorian <laughs> does talk. Willie McCoy doesn't talk. Oscar's not very loud. We're, we're, I'm glad we don't huddle. I mean, uh, maybe that's why we don't talk very much. We're not used to talking. We don't ever huddle. Has Kavorian always been one of those guys? I felt like he was quiet when he started here. No, he's always been a talker. Uh, you just didn't hear him as much because he was probably watching Sincere but all the time. But, yeah, he's always been a talker. For you guys as a coaching staff, is it, do, do you like that, having guys that are just get you locked in and, and quiet, do their business, or is that something where you wish they talked more? No, I wish every one of them 
were just like Amador, McEwen, Oscar, Liggins, Ken, <laughs> Joe, Brandon. There's nothing better than guys that, you know, they'll speak when they need to be spoken to, and they'll say their piece. But they're, they're not chatterboxes for sure. There's not, there's not any drama with those guys. It's just punching the clock every day. Are there any position groups in particular you're going to have the closest eye on as you look to set the depth chart where maybe there's the most questions to be answered? I think the cornerback room is the one that's the most, you know, going to be watched. Uh, for a couple reasons, we lost so many players. You know, we lost, uh, here I go, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it. I hope I can remember them all. We lost Cam, who was a starter, right? We lost Nick Troy Fortune, who was a starter. We lost DeJuan, who was uh, in that too deep as well. And I thought we had a fourth one. Uh, and I might just be having a mind blank right now. But it'll be interesting to see how does Zay Frazier come on. Uh, Cyrus Stitch Dumas, come on. Denver Harris, come on. You know, Gavin, how does he come on? Uh, Dangerfield, how does he come on? And, you know, Zach's a really good football player as well to transfer in here. So we feel good about the room, but I think that's going to be a good one to watch. And the way we, you know, we press out there and we get after it. We're pretty aggressive, but I have a lot of confidence in Nick Brown's ability to teach, recruit, and develop. Dumas is an interesting case. I don't think we've seen many guys in your time here who have gone in the transfer portal and ended up staying. So how did that process sort of play out? Um, it's just a, a situation where we stayed in touch the entire time. And uh, it wasn't like he got in the portal to try to leave. He was probably not going to play football anymore because of his body and just his health. And uh, he had been training. And he, said he felt he felt pretty good and just stayed in touch. And uh, we went and visited him, and we thought he still – moved around great and he looked healthier than he did when he was with us so uh, he's been back and he's been fantastic and there's been no issues of injury so far I know the hamstring was kind of nagging him a little bit last year is he back to full speed now is he had he the foot ready? as well he had, a, he had a fractured foot early then a hamstring and you know Cyrus had been playing for a while I mean so his body's kind of old and <laughs> beat up a little bit but uh, probably him taking some time away and just you know training getting his body well was just really good for him physically and mentally People to get into it, but getting Johnny Bowens back to San Antonio. Um, if you have a comment on how you got him back to UTSA and now with Avoid on that defensive line, is there is there an opportunity for him at, for some early playing time? Uh, that's going to be up to Johnny. Everybody knows how talented he is. That's never been an issue with him. And uh, we're always excited to have a kid back from Converse Judson. You know, we lose Rashad and we pick up Johnny. So we love the, we love all of our players, but you know, especially the ones from San Antonio. It just creates more interest. You know, the fans like watching it. They talk more about it. Media ask you about it more. So, yeah, of course we're rooting for Johnny, but whoever the best one is a play. Coming in in the summer, how's he assimilated into the, the – He's been good. Calls he really him. has been good. Uh, he, he's been good. You can tell he's. You can tell he wants to prove himself. Uh, I sense that. You know, now I haven't coached him in a game yet. I've only been with him through the summer. So it's a pretty short time to really be speaking on someone. Uh, but since he's from San Antonio and I've been recruiting Johnny forever, it seems like, um, I, I felt like answering the question would be fine. What is uh, JT Clark's involvement or level of participation going to be starting practice tomorrow? Uh, he, he'll, still be, he'll still be with the training staff and uh, still rehabbing and trying to get him up to speed before we feel like we can put him out there. How about Makai Hart? Uh, he, he, he'll be on a pitch count. He doesn't want to be, uh, but he's going to be. Uh, you know, he thinks he's ready right now and thinks he should be the all-conference tackle that he's always been. And I'm going to try to pace him. I've told him to his face a million times, he's, he's a bonus player for me. Uh, he doesn't like those words. He wants to be in the starting lineup since day one. And uh, I'm not saying he won't be, but I'm going to have him on a pitch count and see if we can pace him uh, to get him through this season. Aside from those two, does this feel like the healthiest the team's been coming into a fall camp since you've been here? Um, Oh, that'd be hard for me to answer right off the bat. But I, if I lose one kid, I think the sky is falling. So I'm never happy when I lose one. Uh, so I, I, we've had more injuries before than we have right now, obviously. But we haven't even practiced yet, so who knows? Jeff, since me today, you guys announced that uh, Nick Booker Brown and Corey Lucius wouldn't be on the team. Just was wondering if you could share anything about what went into that decision or why that was an important step for the program to take. Uh, you know, like any of our kids that have ever gotten in trouble, we follow the exact same procedure. They're suspended until we gather more information. Um, we have a student code of conduct here. We have a, a committee that looks at all the information, all the facts, and they make a decision. 
and uh, the decisions passed down to the student athlete, and we all follow. GJ had talked about at uh, THSA Coaching School that he was openly talking about the UTSA game uh, with you guys and how it's 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 a big deal for their program and it's already something that those guys are talking about with the rivalry and the proximity. Is that something that you guys are even broaching or is it all focused on week one with Kennesaw? Yeah, we, we have Kennesaw the first game of the schedule. Jeff, how did uh, your women's event go on Saturday? It was awesome. Carrie Bear did a great job. Uh, the CEO of the Trader family uh, crushed it as always and uh, she's a very focused young woman and when she sets her mind to something it's usually done well you combine Becky Salinas and April and Sarah and uh, Patty Ritterman and all in that and Miss Letty uh, and Christy Prescott we can go on and on and on uh, my man Mike Giglio was on a lot of zoom meetings with those women and they did a fantastic job we had over 200 women here there was a couple things we could we'll change I appreciate Vinny showing up giving us great publicity on that um, but it was very, it was fun. Uh, everybody had a great time. There's a couple of little tweaks we'll make and uh, excited, you know, whenever you're doing a new program, there's a lot of firsts and uh, there's another first for us. Uh, but like anything in San Antonio, every year we do it, it'll just keep getting better. Jeff, I know you're always very high on praise for the city of San Antonio, but just from when you started here to now, just how has that grown and what kind of you know, support does that give y'all just going in, you know, going back from when it started to year one to now to year five? I got emotional Saturday. Uh, I just happened to walk in uh, on a couple of them. They didn't have me talking. They felt like everybody gets sick of hearing me talk, right? <laughs> so we had all of my assistant coaches and their wives doing the talking. And I was just a spectator. Uh, but listening to our women fans just express their gratitude back to my coaches for the joy, the fun, the meaning that it's given the city for the game of football and what it's done for them uh, was very inspiring, very encouraging. Uh, and, and my own assistant coaches came to back to me again, like many times before, and said, you always tell us how much you love this place. And it's a great reminder of you know, what a profound difference a great football program makes on a city. Uh, so uh, we're really proud of that. Uh, we've got a long ways to go. Uh, with the possibility of the playoffs out there, that's really exciting. The Roadrunners just got to be better in September if we want to we want to get there. How close is this place to getting it to where you want it to be? Uh, we're not far. We're not far. Obviously, with NIL, we've got to get that. We got to figure that out. We got to have a plan there. I know Dr. Compost is working on that, and uh, you know we, we finally got you know a, a, a real person in Parker Cundiff to identify personnel and help me there in recruiting. Uh, you know we got Jenna over our recruiting now. That's been a, a huge, huge addition. And those are two added pieces that have really helped us. Uh, we're, we're finally, we're fully stabbed in the, in the weight room for the first time since I've been here. That's all been a huge, our nutrition has continued to get better since we've been here. And uh, there's been a lot of fundraising, a lot of, a lot of boosters giving, a lot of work by, done by a lot of people uh, to get us there. We're not there. Uh, and obviously the bar keeps, the ball keeps moving because now Memphis, South Florida, uh, we got to keep up with those guys if we want to win this league. When you talk about the staff, how have you guys realigned things with the new rules on the number of on-field coaches that are allowed? Yeah, we just, you know, we're going to try to reveal that here soon uh, on just on what guys will be doing now. Um, we've worked real hard on trying to get that all uh, situated, and uh, we'll, we'll be revealing that quickly, I would imagine, within the day, maybe, maybe tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it.